Need an easy dinner tonight? Something you can throw together in about 20 minutes or less? I got you covered. Hey y'all, I'm Jen and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing four easy, quick, and delicious dinner recipes I know your family is gonna love. And we got a star guest today, the rotisserie chicken. Okay, so the first recipe we're gonna make it's called French Onion Chicken and Rice Bake. And y'all, this recipe could not be more easy. So as y'all saw, I already went ahead and put all my chicken. I was hoping to get two meals out of one rotisserie chicken, so I'm gonna try and stretch this. This particular recipe and most recipes call for about two cups of shredded cooked chicken. I have about three cups here. But like I said, I'm gonna try to stretch this out and I think it'll work okay. All right, so I already have my chicken in my bowl. Next, we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. The first one, you're gonna pick up some refrigerated sour cream style French onion dip. You wanna get the kind that's refrigerated in the grocery store. So the recipe calls for a cup. This is actually 12 ounces, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use it all because there's no sense in keeping a tiny little spoonful in the container. Next in is one can of cream of chicken soup. Next, we're gonna add about a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Next to the bowl, the recipe calls for two cups of cooked instant white rice. You could totally use a packet of the instant uh, rice. I just cooked up some brown jasmine rice earlier gonna add that in that's probably a little bit more than two cups but since I didn't have quite probably enough chicken I think that'll be okay and last but not least to the bowl we're gonna add about a half a cup of chicken broth and y'all does that get any easier we're gonna mix this up we're gonna top it with some French fried onions and this will be ready for the oven all right so I have my 9 by 13 baking dish here I know it's kind of hard to see since it's clear just going to give it a quick little spray. All right, so we have everything in our baking dish. Next, we're just going to top with some fried, French fried onions. The recipe calls for half a cup, but I mean, you know, just go for it. Just do whatever you feel. I think that's a better plan. All right, this is gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes until that cheese is nice, hot, and bubbly. One more thing, if you don't like onions and you're still watching this recipe, you can totally do this without the onions. Yes, I know we have a lot of oniony things going on in there, but I would suggest just not using the crispy onions on top, obviously, and then in place of the French onion dip, just use sour cream. I still think that would be a really creamy, cheesy chicken and rice casserole. You could even top it with some buttery Ritz crackers or some cornflakes, even just breadcrumbs. So you can totally make this even if you don't like onions. Okay, McKenna just said this is so good, right? Mm -hmm. And what'd you tell him, or what did you tell me it tasted like? It tastes like um, chicken casserole, but with some onion in it. Yeah, with a little bit more flavor. She said it's really, really good. So, all right. You like it? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Like, is it like Infinity Stars? Infinity Stars? All right. All right, so tonight for supper, I am making the ultimate creamy chicken tortellini soup. And it's very, very easy. So, I already have my large pot out here. I'm gonna toss in two tablespoons of butter. 
Once that starts to melt, I'm gonna add in some veggies. All right, so my butter is almost melted. I'm just gonna add in some minced garlic. And of course, I'll have all these recipes a link down below or typed out so you guys can go and try them. I want that garlic saute for just a few seconds just to open up everything. And now, you're supposed to saute your onion in with the garlic. I have all of my veggies here. Darren, so thankfully, chopped all these veggies up for me. So you it's just, <laughs> it's onions, carrots, and celery. We're just gonna saute these until soft. And I actually also have some leftover mushrooms. I thought I would just add into this soup as well. I'm gonna let those saute for just a few minutes until they're starting to get soft. And then I'll add my mushrooms in since those don't need as long of a cook time. All right, next time, <laughs> time, next time, gosh, I cracked myself up. Next time for the seasoning. <laughs> Oh gosh. What time is it? <laughs> time for time. Time to eat. Time for time. All right, it really is. So, um, we're gonna have to just sprinkle in a little bit of time. Y'all know how I do. We don't got time to measure. Next, we're gonna add some parsley. Oh, no, these jokes for parsley, these. Uh, it's only parsley funny. <laughs> it's only parsley funny. All right. Next. We're gonna add some oregano. Yeah, good luck making a joke about that. I bet you I can think of one. Hold on, give me a minute. I thought of a joke about oregano, but went to oregano. Uh, that sucked. That was awful. That was awful. Sorry, y'all. Sorry to let y'all down on that one. All right, next, we're gonna add four cups of chicken. I'm using chicken broth. You can use chicken stock. Just gonna pour that right in. And at this point, the recipe also calls for black pepper. At this point, we're also gonna add our shredded chicken back in. Or in, I should say. All right, so my soup is simmering. Next, we're gonna add some frozen tortellini. The recipe calls for two cups. Next, the recipe calls to add a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and forewarn you guys, this recipe is not the best written. I hate to say that, but it's just not. You kinda have to figure out exactly what it's talking about. Um, you know how if you press print recipe, it normally comes up as one unit. This does not, so anyway, we're just gonna kinda guess here. So add a little bit of Parmesan cheese, now I'm gonna let these noodles, a little tortellini cook. Since we added in the mushrooms, we have a little bit more veggies. I'm gonna go ahead and add at least another cup of chicken broth. I may add more at the end. I just wanna be sure those tortellini have enough liquid to cook. And we're also gonna add some heavy cream and some spinach, so. Add just a little bit more liquid, you can eyeball it. All right, so I'm turning our soup down to a simmer. And I'm gonna add one cup of fresh spinach. Of course, that will cook way down. And lastly, we're gonna add some heavy cream to make this soup creamy. I'm just gonna add a little bit. I always add a little bit more. That should be good. This actually looks and smells really good and so easy. This seriously came together in less than 30 minutes. All right, y'all, so update on the tortellini soup. I think it's really good. It definitely has a lot of flavor in there. The veggies are cooked perfectly, but I think it's just enough flavor where even picky eaters would like this, even with all the veggies in there. Very mild flavors, but like I said, a lot of them. So definitely think this is a great recipe, especially right now for fall. Super easy, came together super quick, so I think this is a great one. Hey y'all, so tonight we're gonna do a sheet pan dinner. I hate to call this a recipe because it's so easy, but 
you need to keep this in your arsenal of rotisserie chicken ideas because it's just so easy to throw together. So we're gonna be making some barbecue chicken nachos. We're just gonna put a couple handfuls of chips on a cookie sheet. I put some parchment paper on here just so all that cheese and stuff won't have to worry about it sticking too much. And we love doing stuff like this. We love doing nachos for lunches on the weekends and for dinner. I'm actually doing this for a lunch, so I have a smaller pan here. So to a small bowl, I have my shredded rotisserie chicken, and I'm just gonna add some of our favorite barbecue sauce, because we are making a barbecue chicken nachos. Just stir that around. And then, of course, we're just gonna top the chips. Next, we're gonna throw on some whole kernel corn. And of course, you can put whatever you want on these nachos. Y'all know how to make nachos. We're just making them together. Cause it's fun, and it's a fun dinner. Next, we're gonna add some onion. I'd have loved to have red onion, but for some reason, my red onion that I see at stores lately has not been looking good. So, we're just going with some white onion. Next, on top of that, I just have some sharp cheddar cheese. Again, any kind of cheese you wanna do would be great. And the last thing we're gonna add before they bake are some jalapeno spices. We like pickled jalapeno, but of course you could use fresh or any kind you want. All right, I'm gonna leave this side jalapeno less for the kids. And that's kind of the beauty of it too. You can have everybody pitch in. You could do it on a big baking sheet and just let everybody throw on whatever they wanted. All right, this is ready for the oven. I have my oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna do it five or 10 minutes just until that cheese is nice and melted. All right, the nachos are nice and hot out of the oven. I did them about, uh, not quite 20 minutes. So now we're gonna add a few more toppings. First, we're gonna add a little bit more barbecue sauce. My barbecue sauce already has a little squirt bottle, so that's perfect. Can't have nachos without sour cream, at least in my book. Just gonna drizzle some of that on as well. Cilantro. And then next, I had some leftover french fried onions from the casserole the other night. So how delicious will that be on some barbecue chicken nachos? So, I think we're just gonna put these right down the middle. And then we are done. How delicious do these look? These would also be perfect for game day which I just did a whole video on game day recipes. I'll have that link down below for you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Looks so good at that. <laughs> All right, so tonight I have a classic, an oldie bit of goodie. Um, if you've been with me for a while, you will know my Alfredo recipe, but I couldn't do a rotisserie chicken video and not have some Alfredo, some Cajun Alfredo thrown in there. This is one of our favorite meals to do with a rotisserie chicken. So I just thought I would show y'all how I make my Alfredo sauce really quick. It's super easy. If you love restaurant Alfredo sauce, I promise you, this tastes exactly like it. It is so good, and I think to a lot of people, Alfredo sauce seems kind of intimidating, but it's really like the most simple thing ever to make, so. And obviously, nothing wrong with jarred Alfredo sauce. If you wanna pick it for rotisserie chicken, that's another idea. Get you a jar of Alfredo sauce, boil you some noodles, there you go, you got dinner. But, I'm gonna show you how to make some really good homemade Alfredo. So I have my noodles over here boiling. I just have whole wheat penne, that's just what we had on hand. And I have six tablespoons of butter in a large skillet. I'm just gonna let that melt, and we'll be on our way to some good homemade Alfredo. So this sauce comes together so quick in 10 minutes, tops. So my butter is melted. I'm gonna add probably a teaspoon of minced garlic 
If you want to mince your own fresh garlic, you go right ahead. We try not to do it the easy way. We're using rotisserie chicken. We got to get dinner on the table. So I'm going to saute that for just a second. So that garlic saute for about a minute. And now we're going to add two ounces of cream cheese. I soften mine right in the microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds. That way it can melt up nicely. And you just want to whisk your butter and your cream cheese. It will be kind of separated at first, but have no fear. Don't think it won't come together because it will. Just stir it up the best you can. And then next we're gonna add an entire small bag, six ounces of shredded Parmesan cheese. Again, if you wanna shred your own fresh Parmesan cheese, you go right ahead. But I promise you, I've made this a million times in the bag or the little container does perfectly fine. Just don't use the green can stuff. Use actual shredded Parmesan. You can buy the small carton, the small carton so you don't have to think about it. This one is one quart. We're gonna do about, mm, probably about a cup if you wanna measure it. And again, we're just gonna keep whisking. You have to stay over your stove when you make this, because like I said, it comes together really quick. You'll see it will be clumpy at first, but I promise it'll melt. It'll be all velvety smooth. And you can just totally eat it like this. I don't add any seasonings. You definitely don't need salt. The only other thing would be maybe some pepper, some white pepper if you have it. But my husband's favorite meal happens to be Cajun Alfredo. So we're gonna make this into a Cajun Alfredo. And of course you can use Cajun seasoning in a jar. Sometimes we have that on hand, sometimes we don't. Right now we don't, so we're gonna add all the seasonings in separately, but all right, so our sauce is really smooth, really creamy. We're gonna turn it down to really, really low now. And we're gonna add in our Cajun seasoning mix. So we're gonna start with a little garlic powder. Just gonna sprinkle it in. Onion powder. Black pepper, white pepper, a tiny bit of cayenne pepper, a few shakes of paprika. If you have smoked paprika, that would be good also. And lastly, a tiny shake of ground thyme. All right, I'm just gonna continue to whisk that all up. It's gonna smell delicious. This is probably gonna be better than jarred Cajun sauce. I mean Cajun seasoning. All right, next up, remember the rotisserie chicken? The star of the show, I already shredded it up yesterday. I'm just actually gonna dump it right on in the sauce. You could heat this up in a pot. I would just add a little bit of olive oil or a tablespoon of butter to reheat it. I really despise reheated meat in the microwave, but if you don't despise it, then you can do that too. But I'm just gonna add it into the sauce. That way the sauce can sit here and simmer and that meat will heat up really nicely. All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for today's video. As always, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Leave me a comment down below, let me know if you think you might try one of these recipes, or maybe you've already tried them before. Thank y'all so much. I hope you're doing great. Happy cooking. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, y'all.